Hello, people of the planet. We're heading into another episode of Starseed Mission Support. Today, we are talking about false light and new age programs of deception. And so I was just showing the people on YouTube over there. This is the notes that I have today. Usually I write some notes. Usually it's about half the page. Um, I just got so many um, messages from all of you online this week not coordinated but coordinated somehow obviously you guys didn't talk to each other um before sending me messages about your experiences with you know false leaders and gurus and parasites of the community and things like that so i'm really excited to share my uh, perspectives and my experiences with you um because I've been collecting data for the last few years. I have a lot of data. And, you know, I'm also just really excited about some of these perspectives that are coming in around this subject. And so go and grab a pen and paper, um, grab your journal because, you know, you're gonna wanna take some notes. Uh, some of these things you're gonna wanna take into your life to implement. I get asked all the time about ways that we can improve our discernment. And so basically this whole webinar is about how we can begin to really discern what's going on in our world and encourage our growth and our ascension process without all of these booby traps that have, you know, intentionally been placed there to stunt our growth. Because what's gonna happen when all star seas wake up and we fully activate and we come into our power and we're in the world changing the world is that you know the whole system is going to crumble we're going to eradicate this parasitic construct and so obviously the beings entities they don't want this to happen and they've been plotting the destruction and the distraction of light workers for thousands of years and so this is what we're getting into today and just before we um, dive right in just to let you know there is only about 10 hours left to sign up for my next womb healing class that is starting on Tuesday. I'm getting messages from people that are like, can I have a few more days to think about it? The answer is no, because I need a few days to put everyone in their groups. I want to make sure that I'm organized. I want to make sure that I'm showing up, you know, as complete and as grounded as I can. And so the container and registration is closing basically when I get up from um, bed, because tomorrow I'm going to be starting to work on those groups and everything. So if you're still on the fence about signing up for, for this uh, nine week womb and sexual healing journey, you've got about 10 hours. The womb, <laughs> the link for that is down in the description below, or if you're on Instagram in the link in the bio. And on that note, we are going to dive right in. So today we're going to go over eight distinct sections um, on this conversation about false light and the new age programs of dis, uh, deception. So get your pen and paper ready, okay? So the first major thing we wanna talk about is what are you looking for, okay? Why are you on the internet? Why are you watching these videos? It's very important for you to understand this because I remember when I first woke up, you know, it's like we just woke up and everything, the false matrix was so boring and gray and there was no anything spiritual in it. And we've been longing for spirituality and longing for magic that we knew existed, but could not find anywhere in the false matrix. And so when we first wake up, we want to just gobble it all up, right? We want to watch all the YouTube videos. We want to find all the astrology things. We want to just get all up in tarot and crystals and all the things. And this is a really important phase of our awakening where we're in this exploration, right? But in that moment in time, you know, we're really just spewing our awareness and our energy all over the place without a clear idea of exactly what we're actually doing. Um, this is the greatest way for your mind to get absolutely Absolutely lost on the internet. Why? Because if you set your ungrounded and undirected mind free on the internet, it's just going to go and grasp onto anything and you're just going to be absolutely lost. And all of these people on the internet, they will tell you things, they will say things, they will have their different perceptions. But really, is every new age person made to be a spiritual teacher? Absolutely not. What is even a spiritual teacher? Right. And so most people wake up and they think, oh, well, you know, I used to make money some way in the false matrix and now I can make money in a different way. And I've just seen this over and over and over and over and over again, where people wake up and they basically bring all of their garbage into the new age community, start a new age business and continue to perpetuate the same things that, you know, made the false matrix parasitic and, you know, full of viruses to begin with. 
And so the question you're asking yourself is, what are you looking for? Because the more intentional you can be with how you spend your time and energy, this is what makes you energetically sovereign. This is so very important because you'll notice that what makes the false matrix a system of enslavement is that people do not get to spend their time and their energy in the way that they want to. And what is time and energy? This is life right? Your life force and how you have life move through you. This is your time and energy. We experience life through time. We experience life through our energy. And so if you have no idea, or if you're not the only dictator, (laughs) dictator is funny word, but if you inside of your being, inside of your soul, inside of your mind, inside of your heart, if your body is not the only and the sole dictator of your time and energy, then something else is right? And this is how we um, come into energetic sovereignty is slowly we begin to reclaim our time and energy until our whole day is just filled with things that come from inside of us that we are the source of. Um, Every action, every thought, everything that we go out and seek and find and study comes from this internal source. And this is how we reclaim our sovereignty. And so my channel here at the Earth Star Academy is for three specific things. The first thing is starseed mission support. So you come to my channel because you agree or you feel resonant that you are a starseed and you want to have energetic or knowledge or energy which supports you in your awakening and your process of clarity. The second um, intention for my channel is training and education for healers, particularly starseed, shamanic, and multidimensional healers because this is really the information that is streaming in from my higher self. We dissect the false matrix. This is very specific information. I'm not really here to help you find God or whatever. I have very specific scientific information as a star being that helps fill in those gaps that you have in your mind. And, you know, in my recent talk, I candidly said, you know, we have great respect for our scientists and our dentists and our doctors, but we don't put our doctor on a pedestal. You know, we don't worship our doctor. We don't build little altars and call our doctor funny names like, you know, Papa this or Mama that. We just have great respect because they have spent a long time devoting themselves to cultivating a skill. So they become very skillful. And so we trust them with our um, desire to learn certain things or receive their services. So this school is an educational training, even though we're talking about spiritual things and the camera's out of focus again. We're talking about spiritual things. We're talking about DNA and our light body and our multidimensional self. But you are receiving that information and in the same way that you would respect your dentist but not put them on a pedestal you are respecting and you acknowledge that i have this information and you love me but you're not putting me above yourself in any way so the third thing that this channel is for is new earth mission training so if you are a star seed that is here to change the world I know that I have a planetary leadership soul contract, which means that I am here to hold space and to create foundations. And so what that means is that we're providing support and knowledge around healing, around creation, and around new earth entrepreneurship. You know, these are grounded concepts, things like you know, taking care of your money. So many of you want to build healing centers. Well, it's kind of ludicrous to think that we're going to change this whole world with no roots on the ground, with no foundation. So there's a lot of information and knowledge that we've been brought into that, you know, are about productivity and about um, maximizing our efficiency and about, you know, finding our purpose and, you know, the ability to actually (laughs) commit to working hard. These are human things that need to be addressed that rarely are. Right. So if you come to my channel, these are the three specific things you're coming for. It's not some vague thing. You're not getting entertainment, even though I try to make my content very entertaining because, it's you know, you learn through having fun. But it's not like you, you know, are are chilling. I, I don't know how chill these videos are. You definitely don't just turn my channel on like Netflix and just, you know, veg out. And so. In this line of thought, you want to choose your quote unquote influencers. Now, when I say influencers, I just really mean people that make content on the internet. But I like this word because you have to realize that everything that you consume influences you in some way, right? Even if it's subconsciously, 
I know that, you know, this is why I choose my influencers, and I use that word very loosely, I choose influencers very carefully because I know that they're all bringing very specific energy into my life. And so I'm very conscious about the content that I consume on the internet because they're usually things that I know that my soul needs. So for example, when I um, sign up for different Instagram accounts or to follow different Instagram accounts, I will think about the energies that I actually need more of in my life and the things that I'm trying to learn. So for example, for a while I was trying to learn, you know, how to create a schedule that keeps me diligent and keeps me working, but keeps me inspired because it's not really about, you know, dragging yourself into doing things you don't like. This is kind of a mindset shift. And so I chose specific influencers or um, Instagram channels that were very inspiring, but also very grounded, you know. So other people uh, recently um, that I'm really enjoying right now are people like Tony Robbins. I took a gander into what Tony Robbins has done. And I'm just really impressed by everything that he has able to accomplish. And when we're thinking about revolutionizing the world and changing the society and rebuilding and building a new earth, building new human civilization, none of it is going to happen if we're sitting around just thinking about how great it's going to be one day when the new earth is here. New earth is going to be created by the creators, by people that are in their bodies that love life, right? Life is boring if you just sit in your bed all day and you're on the internet scrolling, looking at people that glitter on the internet. Where you really want to be is inspired by that thing inside of you and you're working hard every day, at least for me, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm so excited to be here because I get to work on all of these different kinds of things. And this is taking very many years of reclaiming my conscious energy, right? There's not a moment in time when I'm just somewhere talking to a person or on the internet without being very intentional with how I spend my time. This is, you know, sometimes you guys message me, you're like, how are you releasing new music and making content and building a school and emailing us and doing all these things? Like, do you have a clone? Or do you have, you know, I don't have a massive team. I really don't, you know, my main support person um, is someone that, you know, is in school full time. And so I just am very effective and I'm very productive because I am very aware of how I spend my energy and time because I know that my life force, my sovereign divine creator life force is the most valuable thing. And so I don't just go on the internet. I don't watch any videos unless I'm very intentionally and consciously choosing these things to feed and nourish my brain or my soul or my emotions in some way. Okay. And so once again here, if you set your undirected mind free onto the internet, you will be lost at sea and waste your time. And you will find that when you waste your time, you will have goals, you will have dreams, you will have fantasies of the future, but you will find yourself three years down the line still exactly where you were because that time so much, you know, people tell me, well, I don't have time. I have a full-time job. I have family. I guarantee you every single person can begin to re- um, colonize their own time if they became more aware of how we're actually spending our time uh, by just you know scrolling or watching random things that's not actually I call it you know junk food for your brain <laughs> okay and so the question here is are you seeking support and training to be your best self because then you open up your mind to get exactly the kind of food for your brain that you need is it time management is it about finances is it about strengthening your body all of these different things that i used to when i was going to school i was thinking oh finances as for losers you know that's part of the false matrix you know I'm, i hate money you know i want this world to crumble and then i quickly realized that you know in the new earth, there's going to be people creating things. Who are the people creating things? Is really entrepreneurs, right? Not everyone is here to create things that benefit the society, which is really what an entrepreneur is. Is somebody that thinks about ways that we can make our collective experience better. Now, that's the way it's supposed to work. This is a new earth template. Of course, there's so many distortions and nasty things in the false matrix that has made business a very negative thing. And that being said, as the creators of the new earth, we are really here to create something new and something that will benefit humanity and evolve society, right? We are the ones that are evolving society. If we want to see new um, nature-based clothing, something that we're always going to need. I mean, I doubt that the planet is going to exist where everybody's naked all the time. 
right? If you look at up, upstairs, all of us are wearing clothes and different expressions that we love. And so we're always going to need entrepreneurs and creatives and artists to make clothes that actually are better, that are good for the environment, that are with made with organic materials, made with you know natural dyes and all of these things. And so all of these different things, new instruments, new technologies, new ways of um, operating, new ways of connecting. If we're tired of these Goliath beings, these corporations that do things wrong, and we want things to change, we have to remember that we have the power to create new systems. And the way that we do that is by learning skills. And the way we learn skills is by recognizing what we're interested in, what we're missing, and going out and finding the resonant information that serves you. And very rarely is that going to be a spiritual teacher. And here is why. Seeking God is the greatest deception ever. As long as we are told that we need to seek diligently to find God, we're literally in the opposite energy of being connected to God. Right? This is what a reversal is. It's like, for example, have you ever been holding your keys and you're like looking for your keys all over the place in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a comment or a heart if you have been, if you've, you've experienced that where you're holding your phone or something like that and you're looking everywhere for this thing. And then at a certain point, you look down and you're like, oh my God, I feel so dumb. I was just holding it this whole time. And so this is kind of, you know, how it works is that when, when you are looking for it out there, you're never going to find it. And if you can't find it out there, then the system can use that against you saying, well, oh, you know, you have to follow me and you have to follow this guru and you have to follow this way and all, and, you know, and you'll feel like you'll never find it. And it'll be 20 years and you're still giving money to the organization is a very tricky thing. Right. And so what is spirituality? This is something that's understandable because we have been existing inside of this false matrix and we have been inside of this dark age. And so humans have existed, you know, almost in this illusion of separation. And this is not a natural state for humans or any life force. And so we have this inner desire and this inner um, calling, this yearning to be connected and to be resonant with that divine love inside of us. And so this is why it's been so easy for false spiritual teachers and gurus to thrive because they're really capitalizing on this very innate desire that humans have, right? And so the thing is that, you know, seeking God is the greatest deception or seeking spirit or seeking love, seeking divine love, seeking inner divine union, because this is really something that we have to close our eyes and just realize is present, right? I mean, it's what you're made of. There's not a moment when you are not that. There's not a moment when you are not absolutely loved. And if we're not feeling it, you know, this is why we teach the healing. This is why we engage in the healing. I fully believe that as long as we provide the tools and we create the experiences around healing, that if we heal, then what's going to naturally emerge is what we already are. If we begin to clean away the mud and heal the wounding and the um, deserving and the unworthiness and the pain, all of a sudden we'll find ourselves in a place where we just come into the absolute stillness and quiet of our true inner essence. And there we will be where we've always been and complete connection and absolute union with divinity, with the universe, with God, or whatever you want to call it at all times. And so this is why seeking God is the greatest deception. And this is a great, you know, signpost. If anyone says to you, you know, you need me to find God, or you need to practice these specific things, or this is the only way you're going to get to heaven, giant red flags, uh, no thank you. In fact, I don't think anyone can keep you <laughs> from God right? Except maybe the illusions inside of ourself, okay? And so the third thing, that was the second thing, okay? The first thing was, what are you looking for and how you can be conscious with your time? The second thing was talking about, you know, what my channel is specifically for and how we have to choose our food that we give our mind, the third thing here that we're coming into is talking about the physics of the false matrix and the physics of the organic matrix. Now, this is an 
extremely important thing. I want you to write this down. If this is the only thing that you get out of this uh, webinar or this transmission today, then, you know, you, I'll, I'll have done my job because this thing is a concept that, you know, it might just be conceptual in our mind, but it's really something that takes time to fully, you know, integrate. So we're going to just slow down a second, okay? I'm going to say here that a physics, when I say the physics of the false matrix, what I'm talking about is the organizing principles and the psychology and the energetic nature, or what is commonly accepted, what is commonly accepted as being normal, the backbone or the fabric of a reality. So for example, in the false matrix, the common belief of the backbone or the fundamental background of the reality is that um, there's no life beyond life or death. There's no such thing as a soul. The body is the only thing that there is. Organs and systems all exist separate of each other. Another one is that, you know, children are born new and they, um, we have to kind of indoctrinate them or, you know, some kind of thing. Um, another one is that, you know, we don't know if there's a God. And some of the other physics <laughs> of the false matrix included that the earth was the center of the universe, right? Back in, you know, the medieval times before Galileo uh, came up with these theories, the church was adamant that the science or the physics or the reality was the physics of the false matrix was that the earth was the center of the universe. Now, now everybody knows that that's not true, but there's so many other things, for example, that, you know, there's other dimensions don't exist, that telepathy can't happen. All of these things are the physics of the false matrix. Now there's other physics of the false matrix as well. Things like um, love is painful. And many of these things are viruses that were inserted into the system in order to perpetuate itself. This is how the false matrix, I call it the false matrix mind control, because so many of these things were intentionally created to imprison human consciousness, these beliefs, these um, organizing principles or the psychology of the collective. Okay, this is what we call the physics. And so things like, you know, if you um, don't hit your job, <laughs> then you're not a successful um, person if you don't um, sacrifice your life force and do something you hate in order to survive for your family, then, you know, you're not a family man or, you know, um, what are some other ones that if you, um, the only way that you can make money is through working really, really hard and, and you might not survive if you, you know, don't suffer. <laughs> All of these things are the physics of the false matrix. Another part of this is, um, let's see here. Yeah, okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that deception, things like deception can't exist in a golden age, right? Because if everybody's understanding was that we are divine and that we're co-creative and we are connected to the universe, if this was the underlying set of details of society, then nobody would be able to lie to anyone else. And I think we all come from dimensions and star systems where these perfect realities existed, maybe in previous golden ages. Now, I mean, for me personally, it blows my mind when people do, you know, quote unquote bad stuff, because for my soul, I have a really hard time conceptualizing that people can do bad things. And this has made me really naive on this planet you know, um, let's see, one time, uh, you know, even if it's just like something on the news or something, like somebody like robbed some people or, you know, did murder. I remember in high school, I was obsessed with reading about serial killers because I was like, how could somebody do that? It just could not make any sense in my brain. Or even when I find out, you know, if my friends get cheated on or something, like it just doesn't seem like it's possible. Like I can't wrap my head around people manipulating others and harming others on purpose. I just can't understand it. And I'm sure many of you can you know, totally agree with me on this and feel that as well, because so many of you are also from the higher dimensions and from the angelic realms. I know when you first got to earth, you're like, why are these people like this? Are they broken? What are they doing? What do you mean? You know, this you know, elite has just been taking advantage and imprisoning human energy for so long. How could they even do that? Right? And so we realize that so some things can only exist inside of the false matrix. 
things like false spiritual teachers, things like people that siphon our energy. And so then what is the most important thing? The most important thing is for us to become very lucid and understand what is the physics of the false matrix and what is the physics of the organic living matrix. Now, I, I like this, to break down this word, the matrix, as flies are around everywhere, right? People like to say, oh, we have to exit the matrix. Well, the thing is that the matrix, the word, means mother. And so when we think about matrix, we're really talking about the original tree of life, the original web of life, the original interconnectedness of universal life force, um, or an artificial version of that. Okay, it's very important to distinguish because so long as there's physicality in different dimensions, there's going to be an architecture to the universe. We don't want to get out of the architecture because we created it so we can experience different dimensionalities, right? So not all matrices are bad. And in fact, the organic matrix of this universe is one of divine love, which is why we hear that over and over again. And why all major masters and teachings all over the ancient worlds, they would say the universe is love. God is love. The fabric of this universe is love because the organic matrix, the organic divine mother, father, Christ said, architecture of this universe is divine love now is the architecture of the false matrix divine love i would love for someone to answer this question in the chat below we notice that the architecture of the false matrix is actually parasitism manipulation fear right and all of these things have perpetuated, you know, these these uh, underlying currents of psychology of the false matrix makes it possible for deceivers and fake spiritual teachers to exist, right? So, so long as we are eradicating the false matrix inside of ourself, at some point, certain things no longer to resonate, okay? And so this is when we move into number four here. The fourth thing here is be aware of your own progress of deprogramming. This is very, 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 very important because all of the issues that I see in the New Age disclosure community, let's say most of them, okay? Most of the issues that I'm seeing with, you know, fake gurus and teachers and whatever, it all comes from everyone not being aware of our own progress of deprogramming. And the reason for this is, you know, it's very tricky because the new age uh, reality kind of perpetuates it. It kind of glorifies it. It kind of, um, and, and this is, this is why is because it makes spiritual things secular. Okay. And there's a couple of different uh, ways that we're going to break this down, but essentially if you've never consciously and deliberately studied deprogramming, you need it, right? Because you might be thinking, well, do I need to deprogram? Do I need to um, decondition my myself? Am I participating in the false matrix in some way? If you grew up in the false matrix, if you had muggle parents, if you ever had junk food or McDonald's or watch TV, if you ever participated in the false matrix at all, you need deprogramming. And if you have not deliberately done it, meaning you sit down, you know, hours every day, you take notes, you study, you meditate, you know, it's a deliberate action. It's not like you think about it, right? It's an action. So it's kind of like if you are training to be an athlete, you don't just think, well, okay, I'm going to be an athlete. Oh, yep. Like, this is what I think is going to feel when I'm running. You would do push-ups, you would run, you would condition your body. And so deprogramming our mind and healing is, you know, the same thing as any other physical experience. It's not something that we can just go, oh, I, I, I understand mind control now. It's an internal process, right? And this is a thing that is so tricky is because in the disclosure company, we focus so much about the cabal this, the government that, and the negative ETs. And very little attention is paid internally to how that system has actually affected us. And New Earth L says, is healing deprogramming? So healing is part deprogramming, but deprogramming is really actually building self-awareness. Okay. Building self-awareness means that we almost create this separate part of ourself that's paying attention to ourself 
all the time. Paying attention in neutral. So we're not judging ourselves like, oh, there's, I'm craving McDonald's again. I'm so bad. I guess I'm not going to make it into heaven. Nothing like that, right? When we say self-awareness, it's just that we're becoming aware of how we think, how we talk, how we respond to others, what we think, our belief systems. We're beginning to dissect and really become aware that every single part of ourself we can create. I mean, there are certain things that are essential to our soul, like our personality and our preferences. But as far as how we go into um, designing our life, this is really about you know paying attention and slowing down. How do we study deprogramming? I mean, this is the work that I have come here to do. All the information that I am sharing with you guys is information that I have gathered myself. So it's not like, um, you know, I'm reading about it or any galactic being is coming. I would say that years ago when I first woke up in 11th grade, I was in anthropology class and I had this assignment. And the assignment said, if you were an alien and you came to earth and you had to study one of these things, and I think the list was like, you know, game shows and da- reality TV dating shows um, and, you know, something else. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> something just clicked inside of me. Where I was like, I think that that's actually real. And, you know, just that little thing catalyzed me into realizing that, you know, it's very important for me to perceive everything with my own eyes. Because if you are a true galactic being, right? If you were a true ET on your soul level, you would have very organic thoughts. You wouldn't need some other being to tell you what your mission is. And in fact, how could they tell you what your mission is when you're the one that's down here on the ground? So if anything, you know, we are here feedbacking these information up to them. And um, I think that this is a great way that we can discern because a lot of people will like, flaunt their associations right they're like oh well i talked to jesus and mary up there and you know i got this information from the galactic federation or blah 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 blah. it's like okay so but you if you are presenting yourself as a um as a leader or as somebody that has knowledge you know what are your original thoughts do you have original thought original thought is extremely important because this is uh, we're, we're tapping into the source of somebody's consciousness and how somebody perceives and experiences reality and how somebody perceives and experiences reality and puts reality together is a direct reflection of their level of consciousness. Okay. And so if people have no original thought and they can't piece things creatively together, that's always something very weird. So when people say, oh, I got this message from so-and-so and it's telling us that here's our galactic mission or whatever. And it's like, do they have, are they on their human mission themselves? Are they experiencing, like, what is their humanness um, experiencing uh, and, and accessing? All of these things are very important. And so I'm a scientist. I came down here and I perceived and pieced together. And that was my assignment. You know, this is why, um, you know, this is what I'm sharing with you guys in the Earth Star Academy is that this has been my assignment to break things down, understand, because I think is resonant. That's why so many of the things I say, you guys are like, well, I've always had that thought, but you know, I just couldn't fully trust myself because I thought I was crazy, right? That's because you as a soul are interdimensional being and you are perceiving this reality and picking up that information in the same way that I am. It's just so that, you know, for whatever reason, I've had a lot of support and the galactics continually encourage and let me know that this is my mission to basically tell you what you already know. So you have a reflection of somebody speaking these things out loud out and you're like okay okay this makes sense right i think that this is why you guys resonate with me and this is also why you can uh, understand and know that i have been um nominated for this assignment that we're all doing this together we're all sharing this database of information we're all perceiving right we're all divine multidimensional beings perceiving the situation that we have on earth and piecing it together. And for whatever reason, you guys, you know, nominated me to play this role for you. And this is very, a huge honor to me. I take it very seriously. I don't think of it like I'm teaching you anything. I'm really just holding a resonance so that we can come together and do this thing on this planet. This is what the Earth Star Academy is. And I think that this is important to say because the Earth Star Academy is a guardian sanctioned 
um, creation, that this is something that we're creating together. You all, you know, desired for this support system. And that's why when I say mystery school, we are breaking down this curriculum. And while other people are saying mystery school and they barely understand, you know, how to heal their inner child. And they're saying, oh, I have a mystery school and Jesus is overlighting it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the topics here for a second. <laughs> okay, let's go back here for a second. So four, be aware of your own progress of deprogramming. And so in the beginner section of Versa Academy, we're going to break down all the anti-life and all of the programs, which is really just like a skill that I have. Like I just spent enough time slowing down and perceiving everyone on the planet and seeing what is not right because because my system it comes from an organic system and this is true for all of you who just always feel so weird when the super bowl is on you're like i don't understand why i feel so bad right it's just literally a vibrational difference it's a different architecture of energy and so um we're gonna break down the programming if you've never done deliberate de deconditioning you definitely need it and so the reason why this is important part of this talk is because the one of the programs in the false matrix includes celebrity worship. Okay, this is a huge issue that is inside the new age society because a lot of people wake up and they find the new age and they find the disclosure communities, right? But most of the influencers or most of the people that are making content in the community have not done their own inner work, have not gone through the process of deprogramming their mind control. And so because of that, we're basically perpetuating, I call it the spiritual section of Walmart, right? You go to Walmart and now they have a little section where you can maybe get a journal and this talks about different kind of spiritual stuff, but like it's inside of a Walmart. Right. So I call this the spiritual section of the false matrix is these conventions about psychics, you know, these um, ET sighting conferences, places you go. And it's almost like this entertainment. It's like the spiritual entertainment industry. Right. And there's a celebrities inside of the industry and they because, you know, whether they have information or whether because they're artificially elevated, they, you know, are in a position of power and authority for no reason. <laughs> for no reason. By that I mean is, you know, they will steal and hijack all of these words, right? Ascension, light body, new earth, star seed. They will say all of these words. And yet if you ask them, you know, okay, then where do you come from? They're, they, they can't tell you. Or, you know, what's your 11D dimensional aspect? They can't tell you. You can ask them, you know, you know, what kind of training have you had on a soul level? They can't say because they're just, you know, pulling on the pool of information that's already existent. That's why they will never really say anything that you haven't already heard because there's no original thought because it's not coming from an original place inside of their system. Right. And so here's something really important. The star of your life is you. The star of your life is you. There should never be anyone that you're more enthralled and more esteemed about than yourself because you are the center. You're the creator of your world. Everything outside of you is here to serve you in a way so you can bloom. And by that, I, I don't mean like materials and things like that. I just mean content, right? Information, people out there, people like me even, I am here to serve you. You are deciding to watch my video because it serves you in some way. It helps you. This is very important because it flips, right? It clears a reversal that somehow somebody else is more powerful. You need to put them in a pedestal and you need to give them money because somehow they're amazing and somehow better than you in some way. And we've normalized this pattern. We normalize putting others on a pedestal because this is how the elites have imprisoned humanity for thousands of years. And so when I go to these disclosure conferences and I see these 50, 60 year old ladies and they're like, you know, in love and just so into these con artists, I'm just like, this is really sad because nobody has told them about deconditioning. And so they think they woke up. They just made it into the glass ceiling spiritual section of the false matrix right? The spiritual section of Walmart. 
And so the next thing here then is growing up in a secular environment. This is still a part of the false matrix because the false matrix is, again, a non-sacred system. It's a, it's a non-sacred society. And I would go as far as saying it is a satanic society. So those of you that are new to my work, I will break this down. What do I mean by that? So the word Satan or satanic, my understanding of this word is anything that is anti-life, okay? The totality of the universe loves creation. An organic source being a human being, any, you know, dogs, cats, animals, we love, we have love, we love creation, we love ourselves. we love each other, we love our family, we love life itself, right? So many cultures, original cultures all over the world exists in this state and says that giving gratitude for life is the most important thing. Why is that so important? Because this is a key function or a key organizing principle of the organic matrix. So in our society, one of the main backbones of our reality is that we don't know if there's a God. And if there is, it's not a part of societal norm, right? It's the church or it's whatever religion, you know, the, the, the feeling of love and devotion and holiness inside of a heart. This is not an integrated part of our society. And another part of our society is the normalization of death and of waste and of consuming, right? Consumerism. And so it's a very watered down version um, of beings that are completely anti-life, right? Anti-life means having no respect or no reverence or no sense of love for life. So, for example, our society normalizes severe logging, right? Um, and factory farming. It's like we have to have these protests to say this is wrong when obviously the normal part would just be if everyone was aware that certain things are not cool like factory farming. The fact that it exists and it's normalized and most people are consuming energy in that way shows us that our culture has been severed from that inherent connection and divinity. So this is why I call it a satanic culture is being, you know, um, perpetuated by the elites and by the media. And the reason why this is important is because people think, well, you know, oh, I've never been a part of a ritual abuse. I know that it happens, but, you know, it's never happened to me. But we don't realize that just by being born into this world, we subconsciously take in and normalize a lot of things that are not normal, like the secularization of spirituality, right? And so when we wake up out of that, and we've never had any imprint of what sacredness truly is, and how connecting to life is holy and revered, and there are practices, and there's reasons why we do things the way we do things in, you know, the shamanic practices and in different uh, schools um, of, of teachings all over the world, there's a reason why, you know, when you wake up as a shaman in a tribe and they recognize this gift in you, they say, oh, wow, this, this child is meant to be a shaman. They get sent into training with the elders for 30 years, right? And so in our society, because none of that exists, um, we realize that a lot of people just wake up and they're like, well, you know, I was this in a past life or I know that I'm a healer in this other world or, you know, I, I was a shaman back in, you know, my ancestors or whatever. And then all of a sudden we give ourselves permission to do and to perform healings and all these things. Now, just as a reflection, you know, um, having been on this journey for a while, I only started sharing my gifts when I got a very distinct and clear stamp of approval from the universe. And this, you know, these these experiences happened, but this medicine tattoo I have here was a, you know, very distinct synchronicity that um, when I started this training, my team told me that I was here to be a galactic shaman. And then I you know, got catapulted into all of these training experiences that I chronicle in my book, I Am Starseed, for a very long time. And, you know, one year I heard my team say, you know, you're ready to start to share your gift. 
Now that day I received this email from a woman in Australia saying that she was guided to send me this code that it was for a galactic medicine person or a galactic shaman and you need to tattoo it onto your body to activate the code. Now normally obviously I'm not going to just take some random person's email and tattoo it onto my body but that day when I went out I synchronously you know went to my friend's house and she had a Native American medicine woman whose medicine was ceremonial tattoos and we looked at each other and just got chills and the light came through the space and she looked at me and she said we're meant to do an exchange and I have to you know perform um, a ceremonial tattoo um, experience on you and so I made the connection and this piece took her three hours to tattoo onto me and as she was doing that I was connecting and anchoring all of these higher dimensional aspects of myself into my being I just realized that that was a moment where I was receiving I was receiving a uh, permission, right, from myself, my ancestors, to begin to share my healing because I had downloaded enough of my knowledge into my being, right? And so the thing is that becoming a healer, it's the most profound and most important and, and most meaningful journey you can possibly be on. The only other profession that I can think that is as important to be in absolute integrity with is if you are a children or a care person for young children, right? Raising children and being a healer, these are two uh, professions where you're engaging directly with somebody's soul. It's not like you're just, you know, pulling out their teeth <laughs> or doing a surgery. And even those things are highly esteemed. But when you are engaging and somebody's literally trusting you with their energy and with their soul and with their growth, these things are things that we have to be so deeply in reverence to. So cultivating reverence and cultivating respect and cultivating true ego maturity. These things are so, so important, right? And so if you um, come across a spiritual teacher, you can literally ask them. What kind of ego training have you gone through, right? Like even on earth, you have you you interview people that are meant to teach you stuff. I mean, you go to a physics teacher or you go to um, if you're trying to learn how to sing, you want to find a good teacher. You want to make sure your teacher knows what they're talking about, right? So you say where you went to school, how long have you been practicing? I used to be a piano teacher, so I know that, you know, with anything, if you're going to teach any skill, we can vet people. But in the new age community, it's like there's no system of vetting and people just take other people's word for it. Now, ask good questions. You deserve to know what are your credentials, right? Ask them for their soul resume. Where do they come from? What are your dimensionalities? What are your skills? What are you here for specifically? If they can't answer those questions, I mean, it's not going to be good enough. And I'm just extremely picky right? Even upstairs with interdimensional beings, I, so many beings come to me, they're like, oh, I want to be your guide. I'm like, who are you, <laughs> right? What are you here to bring me? Unless I am in a state of joy and happiness and ease, unless my human self feels just absolute divine love coming from them, I don't need, you know, to feel like I, I can be special if they can offer me something, <laughs> right? And so, whew, the spiritual section of uh, of the false matrix is something that my ancestors absolutely hate because when you make things secular, making things secular means that all of a sudden is entertainment or it's something that you can just consume or it's something that you can just buy. So meanwhile, you know, I have projects that I'm doing. I want to build a school and I want to eradicate human trafficking. And so, you know, the prices for my offerings are extremely affordable compared to, you know, what other people are charging. But even then, you know, people feel like because they gave me money that they can be rude to me or because they paid for something that all of a sudden they're entitled to my ancestors' knowledge. And it's like my ancestors roll in the graves and they just fucking hate that. And so it's like, the secularization and this entitlement is something that we have to work on in our ecosystem as well. And so the whole thing um, circles back into this. 
because somebody was asking me, you know, is pulling tarot cards or buying crystals, is that all bad? And the answer is, of course not. It's about how you engage in those things that makes it important, right? It's not, we're not doing it because, oh, you know, it's cool and it's spiritual and now I'm spiritual and all spiritual doing it. And I, you know, it's all of a sudden being spiritual is part of our identity, part of our ego system, right? It's like when we sense into the source of where our motivation is coming from, sense into where longing comes from inside of us this is very very important the source of our motivation is very important to become aware of because here is where you can really start to gain a greater sense of self-awareness okay so are we really doing something because we hope that it's gonna gain something or because we're gonna make money somehow or because people are gonna think we're cool and we're gonna make friends or is it because we have this deep inner longing to be one with ourself and to be of service to the universe and to become the greatest version of ourself because when those true clear and integral motivations inside of a heart become the north star in our life there's nothing that can take you off of that path. But the thing is that the reason why most people are happy to be satisfied with surface level, watered down spirituality is because at some point you realize that if you, and this might be subconscious, that if you went any deeper, that all of a sudden you would bump into the greatest pain you can possibly feel inside of your heart. And that is the pain of separation right? It's much easier to float around and in this false love and life being like, oh, yes, everything is great. And there is crystals and crystals are fun. And look at all these conferences I can go to. If we really started to excavate and go deep inside of ourselves, we will surely bump into this pain because it's the pain that we have all subconsciously and felt as a collective our entire life. The pain of being castrated from our own inner sense of divinity, right? This was absolutely abnormal. It's not normal for humanity to live out of connection. It's not normal for there to be gurus because we don't need gurus. Like if the world was healthy, if this reality was in a golden age, everybody would be born into a society where divinity and joy were absolutely normal existence of reality and so we have all been part of what i call bio spiritual abuse where from the time we were born we're thrown into the society where sacred and divinity and divine love these things were not mirrored to us to the depth and to the extent that should have been and that actually nourishes our soul and because of that we have forgotten what being connected to that level of holiness and divinity really truly feels like. That level of unity and union and joy and possibility and freedom and creativity, right? All of those things are what we deserve and what is what should be normal and what should be everywhere. Those things were not a part of our upbringing. And so at this point, they've become... Um, mysteries or mysterious and so in order to get through the secular you know we have to begin to address you know how deeply we feel and, and how deeply we feel is really the deciding factor here is like are we really feeling i mean there's so much theatrics i've been in a lot of ceremonies where people are just like they've got the garb and they have to move in this spiritual way oh and beloved you know, I, I'm so, I feel so much divine love. And it's like, you know, if, if God act, <laughs> how much are we really feeling? How deeply are we really feeling? When we deeply feel, right? When we deeply feel, there's no need to extravagantly express it. When we deeply feel, that deep feeling directly translates into our action every single day, Right? Are we, I mean, I wake up in the morning and I'm on it. You can ask my team. You ask anybody that knows me personally. I work really hard, okay? 
I'm spending all of my time. I want, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm connecting. I'm, I'm feeling, and all of my actions are driven by my feeling, not my desire to be spiritual, not my desire to, you know, be seen in a certain way. That's why I don't dress in a very specific way, and I express myself however I want. Sometimes people say, well, are you spiritual or are you a potty mouth millennial? This has happened once before, and, you know, I will say fuck if I feel like it, and that doesn't take away from my inherent spirituality or yours and if you know you have to gauge someone and their level of consciousness and their level of connection by actions by acts right then this is something that we need to break down because maybe you've been fed a version of spirituality that is in the spiritual section of walmart maybe you're being fed a version of spiritual that is really in the spiritual section of the false matrix because this is a great way to trap light workers in the glass ceiling, right? In the in the false new age glass ceiling where we're because we were born into this secularized um, watered down culture where we were never taught what sacredness truly feels like. We're gasping and we're grasping and we're looking for ever we can. And, you know, because we haven't been taught or shown what the true feeling is is it's kind of hard to recognize it and so you have it inside of you though okay you have it inside of you and you just have to realize that you can trust yourself i mean how many times every single person that has contacted me last week about the false teachers and about their experiences every single one of them said well you know i did feel like there was something off i did feel like you know there was something weird but i just didn't listen to myself right Usually, there is never anyone that didn't feel any weirdness at all, right? And so we grew up in this watered-down culture that didn't teach us what sacredness, what being connected to sacredness really felt like. And so it's so important for all of us to begin to cultivate that because, and we're moving into the next part here, that ego is invisible to ego now i want to just rewind here for a second and talk about ego for a second because to me the way that ego is being used in our spiritual community is not the way that i really connect to it so when i say ego training i mean earth self training right i think about ego in the way that it is our human self it is our will and so for the most part the the part of our ego that gets a bad rap in the spiritual community is really a disintegrated or a wounded ego or a disintegrated or wounded inner children so um, in my mythology i say that the ego that commonly gets such a bad name is really just the wounded child because when a human being is healthy the ego is our personality right? It's our joy, is our childlike innocence, is how we can have passion and how we create and how we experience and how we befriend and how we engage, okay? So when we have a disintegrated ego, which means that we have not spent any time getting to know ourselves and just getting to give ourselves permission to love ourselves, Again, because we've existed in this false matrix that was filled with viruses that make us hate ourselves and doubt ourselves. These are anti self viruses. Now, this is, you know, talking about the anti self virus is going to be an entirely different video because the anti self virus is a very gnarly program that basically severs our soul and our body. And this is why it's so rampant in the false matrix mind control system where everything is trying to tell you, you know, oh, you need plastic surgery or you, you hate yourself or you're not good enough, right? All these things are so a part of the physics of the false matrix. And so all of that has festered and created this wounded ego, this part of ourself that is insecure and feels unworthy and feels wounded and feels disconnected and is uncertain uh, don't trust ourselves. don't know, you know, what we're supposed to be doing, disconnected from our soul essence. This is not a normal state of being. Human beings and people are not meant to exist in the state of uncertainty as to not really know who we are at all, right? 
we're meant to exist in a state of connection where we know exactly who we are and what we like and what we're creating in life. This is a state of confidence that is beyond, you know, um, ego as we would sense it in 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 the normal understanding of this word. But a healthy ego it, ego is one that feels empowered by the power of creation of source. And this is the only way that you're going to be able to go out there and change the world is to have on some level that healthy ego, right? And, and you know, a reverse ego, it's still an ego where people are like, um, you know, the, the empath pattern of, you know, overly uh, insecure or overly self-conscious or like, oh, I don't want to take up too much space. Who am I to think that I can, you know, have a successful business and you know i i don't know you know, being powerful is for other people being successful is for other people right this is a weak or a hole in the solar plexus or our ego is in disintegration and so having a, a, a reverse ego and having a narcissistic ego is really the same just on the opposite side of the spectrum even though the narcissism ego have a you know a worse reputation and so a disintegrated ego is invisible to the disintegrated ego and most false light agents and false teachers and false gurus and cult leaders they all have a disintegrated ego but because you know you also have a disintegrated ego you can't see the ego distortions inside of them and so this is why we all need to be engaging in ego training and ego training is something that is essential and ego training is something that i have consistently been guided to do since my awakening because it's about our inner children and our humanness right we want to we want everyone what about what does it feel like in the new earth everyone is in love with their own self because everyone knows that they are all a fractal unique expression of the divine and we understand and feel that way deeply inside of ourselves, and we can then thus deeply appreciate and fully love others in that way as well right and so there's a watered down version of that oh like namaste you know oh i see the light in you and it's like okay i see the light in you and i see life I see creativity, I see potential, I see creation, right? And so important thing here is to ask is, you know, what are you trying to learn? What are you looking for? Why are you in a spiritual community? Okay, who do you want to learn from? Do you want to just learn about the most essential part of yourself by just anyone that says, you know, oh, I am connected to who and just, you know, just using, <laughs> it's kind of like on earth where like, oh, I know Beyonce, you know, they're like, oh, I know Jesus. <laughs> I'm channeling Jesus. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. This, this mystery school is connected to Jesus. It's like, okay, so then let me hear some, like if Jesus was here on the planet right now, I bet he would have some really cool original thought. I don't think he would be repeating the same stuff that he said 2000 years ago because the world was different and he was original back then and nobody was feeding him a script. And so he was looking around and he was talking to people and that was how he was acting. And so, you know, he, he was engaged with the world. And so the world is different now, right? There's technology, there's society, everything in the world is different than it was two years ago. So why would Jesus be the same <laughs> as a, you know, dynamic divine multidimensional being just like you are right you don't think about your past life and you're like oh well you know i think i was for example i had a past life as you know this uh scholar that traveled on a boat now i don't dress like that version of me <laughs> right i'm not like oh i was that scholar guy and i'm like dressed up in like a scholar suit from asia in the 1400s <laughs> nobody does that okay <laughs> And so if people need to play a part and pretend to be somebody else and just repeat stuff, you know, and this is something that we're going to break down because there's actually quite a few different layers of this happening. Okay. And so you want to learn from somebody that is sharing your journey, right? Because all of humanity, and that's why the star seeds, we didn't, but we weren't born into temples. We weren't born into these, you know, private islands or whatever. We were born into the false matrix. 
because our process of awakening, like how are we going to resonate with the rest of humanity? How are we going to really reach our hand out and say, this is how I walked into my empowerment. This is how I remembered my soul. This is how I healed from planetary bio-spiritual abuse. How can we support humanity in that if none of us have gone through it? And that is why every single person in this room is a starseed. You've gone through shit, right? You've had parents that really hurt you and you've gotten abused and you were scared and all of these hardships that you have to undergo yourself because that is supporting you in the cultivation of compassion. If you were just coming down a mountain from a monastery, um, we quickly find ourselves in a situation where there's just, you know, 10,000, 100,000 gurus that are all out of touch with reality and out of touch with humanness, and we would not be able to support humanity at all. We would be lost, okay? And that is why we were all born into normal families, um, into all sorts of different families. We were we chose all sorts of different experiences so we can be relatable because we're human. We are a divine sparks of source in our humanness, just like everyone else. And yet, because of our clarity and because of our template, we're able to engage with this world a little bit differently, almost as if, you know, we came in with less trauma. And so we can remember what life is meant to be on this planet and we can be role models and we can be way showers. This is how we connect with humanity and we bring all of Earth into this new age, right? True new age. And so who do you want to learn from? What are you learning from them? What specifically are you actually looking for when you are going out there and watching these things on the internet? Be specific. You have that power, right? You have that intelligence to decide in yourself. And, you know, our programming from school and everything, we were basically trained from a young age to have authority, to listen to others. This is why, you know, all the greatest con artists just sound like they know what they're talking about. It's like the politicians, right? They're like, I am an authority. And because human, we grew up in our society and we're just literally mind controlled and trained to respond to that energy as a um, subservient being, we continue that process. In the spiritual world, when we have people that just talk about all this stuff and we're like wow you know maybe i don't know anything or whatever so this is why we have to do our ego training right get into our human self and say what am i looking for i am the star of my own life i am the center of my own creation i am here to do something great and when i say i mean you i we we're here to do something great we are here the internet i am here to serve you My information is here to serve you in some way. I hope that my content brings value to you in some way, right? I'm putting you in the space of honor because you're watching this content because it's for you, right? And so, yeah, drop me a comment. I love to hear, you know, what you are receiving from my content right? Is it training? Is it support? Is it healing? Is it just feeling at home? All of those things are so, so important, okay? And so next, we just move into uh, this section called new agey bullshit, <laughs> okay? This section, new agey bullshit, and then the last section is going to be about discernment tips, even though this whole transmission has really just been about that, right? We have to cultivate our sense of self and begin to use our mind to come into time and energetic sovereignty. So we choose. We are the creators of our re- reality. We're not just going to turn our brain off brain off, and, you know, receive mental junk food through whatever crap we find on the internet. We're going to be really specific, right? Just as we want to eat organic food, we want to do things that make us feel good and make us feel empowered some way. So be really conscious of what that is for you. What are you receiving? What are you building? What are you cultivating? What are you learning? And these are my favorite things as my human self. And I think every human being, we're just coming into potential and growing ourselves. You know, we can read and study and practice. These are the fun things we get to do until we're really good at stuff. So new agey bullshit. (laughs) Okay. 
Um, let's see here. Secular spirituality, which we already broke down. I want to talk about bifurcation. Bifurcation is something that is massive in our spiritual community. And I think that this is about seeing timelines, right? We can look at things from now perspective, or we can look at things in a three-year chunk as a time capsule. And when you have holographic consciousness, when your mind expands to pull together information holographically, we can see time in durations and in energy. And so if we look at what's happening right now, the bifurcation is absolutely a true thing that spiritual people are awakening and and starseeds are getting more spiritual and then there are people that seem to be getting even more bogged down right because we have this weird thing going on in the world right now and the elites are really working really hard to trap as many people in the density as they can which they really can't do for that long it's really funny um well in some ways it's not funny at all watching them just completely abuse humans in this way is, actually makes me very angry But the thing is that if you look at the world right now, it appears as if there is a bifurcation that's occurring where people that are awakening are evolving their consciousness and they're growing and they're practicing and they're becoming more and more connected every day. And there's some people that are becoming more and more dense. And I feel like we're actually coming into a precipice here because the extreme versions of this in the new age society that I've seen is that, oh, you know, the ETs are going to come and the humans that choose to, you know, (laughs) stay in the false light or whatever, like they're going to go to some other planet and the light workers are going to go to some other planet. And the thing is that this doesn't make any sense when you understand what the Starseed mission actually is. The Starseed mission is actually a universal project of, um, it's called the Christos realignment mission, meaning we are here to heal and reconnect all the fallen facets of the universal consciousness matrix back into unison back into its original architecture okay and if that was the case if that was the case then you know if we just were saved by a bunch of aliens and the bad humans were taken somewhere else wouldn't we just incarnate on that planet and have to start the process all over again it's kind of like not making sense. And because, you know, I have a very clear understanding of what my mission here is on earth. I mean, I I used to hear this all the time. I would walk around in the mall and I would touch things and I feel the cosmic source energy envelop fallen structures and reclaim fallen consciousness and people just bring everything back into unity and divine love. This is a very, um, physical and visceral feeling right even of going inside and reclaiming myself reclaiming these parts of myself that has fallen into disconnection is a huge part of that work right in the in the microcosmic fractal and so we're really here to reclaim and reconnect and so if that was the case and the bifurcation can only occur temporarily and i think that this is the case um So the other thing is that I feel that sometimes this idea of bifurcation basically suspends light workers, right? In doing anything. Like for me, I have a planetary leadership contract as an indigo. So I'm a 48 strand indigo starseed and I have a planetary leadership contract. And when I'm saying this, I mean, many, 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 many of you have the same contract. We have our different plans, right? We all have our different roles. And so I'm just here to share this information and to share this vibration and share this perspective. Because what that means is that I've seen the futures where we have, um, for example, I, I don't know when this is, but it's going to be when I when my body looks like it's 45 years old, which could be 200 years. I don't know. I realized that recently. I thought it was going to be 40 years. But anyway, at some point when my body looks 40, because I saw this vision in that in my vision, I looked like I was in my 40s. Um, we were we had kind of a new um, organization, a planetary organization that's similar to the UN, but not evil, an actual organic organization that cares for people and cares about, you know, civilization and cares about divine evolution and all those things. We were acting as an intermediary between the Earth uh, governments and the galactic governments, right? So this is a process of this starseed mission. This is where we're going. But it's a grounded effort. It's not like you're going to wake up one day, you know, you've just been, you know, (laughs) sleeping on everything and eating Doritos and all, scratching your butt. And then all of a sudden, one day, they're like coming over your house in the mothership and they're like, 
Edward, it's time. And like, <laughs> it's not how it's going to work, right? It's a grounded effort. It's kind of like saying you, you, you have this vision. You're like, one day I'm going to be a world champion in, you know, a triathlon. But then you just sleep and eat McDonald's every day. And you're like, okay, hopefully one day you wake up and you can just run the marathon, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so what that means is that there's so many things that me as a human being need to learn and grow and cultivate before we can responsibly take on those parts of our contracts. And so, for example, I know that in the future, we're going to build hundreds of healing centers all across the planet in all major cities, and we're going to heal this planet. And disclosure is going to happen, and starseed presence on Earth is going to be an absolute reality to the point where people will say, let me just look up my neighborhood starseed and do my biospiritual healing because this planet has gone through negative ET biospiritual abuse. This is the level of disclosure that actually needs to happen, right? The cabal, the elites, low level stuff, low level stuff, right? But in order for us to get there, the starseeds will actually need to understand how to perform biospiritual healing with great precision and great reverence and really actually embody the maturity to be able to facilitate healing and be able to hold space on a planetary level in that way. And so then in order to build those, you know, centers, <laughs> we're going to need to understand architecture. We're going to have to understand business. We're going to have to understand tech, protecting our assets from the IRS. And all of those things are skills and information that's not just going to, you know, wake up one day and like the aliens are going to come and they're going to drop you a magic, <laughs> a magic download. It's like, no, those are very grounded human things. And we can only take on as much as our root chakra and our lower self and our human self have healed and come into maturation. And so this is all a part of the ego training that I'm talking about is really just the process of our earth self, our human self coming into blossoming and coming into maturation and coming into adulthood, right? And so this is why bifurcation makes no sense to me because this stuff makes me so excited. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my God, you know, what can I do today to get me forward? Get me to move forward. I need to watch this webinar. I need to do my push-ups. I need to stretch. I need to, let's make some music because that's fun. And then let's build this website. Let's write out this, you know, webinar. Let's write out these teachings. Let's all of these things. Um, and I know that, you know, one day it's going to be, I, I know that down the line even further, there are massive temples that we need to build on this planet to actually truly heal the planetary light body because a lot of the star the stargates have been damaged by the military industrial complex and by the wars right this is a high level work that we're here to do and we need us to be empowered on the ground we need to actually be here we need our bodies to feel good we need to feel excited and happy and joyful and capable and empowered in our human self. And this is the new age glass ceiling. And people think it's okay that we're just like, love and light. Oh, blessings, beloved. Oh, I love you so much. And Jesus loves you. And Archangels loves you. Let me pull a card, you know. I mean, I, I don't got time for that. I got I, I got work to do. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm not bifurcating. I love humans. I love humanity. I don't want humanity to get tossed onto some other planet. They don't deserve that. They've been undergoing bio-spiritual abuse. It's not their fault that they're not waking up, right? That's the whole point of why we're here. This whole system was designed to abuse them. This whole system was designed to lock them in mind control. So it was designed to keep them from waking up. They're not supposed to be waking up. We're waking up because we had antibodies. We have so much help. We have awakened light bodies that was born in, into the system with star consciousness. You are so gifted, right? When you realize that you are actually so blessed, you're so lucky to have them born with all of that. Your mom maybe didn't, okay? Your best friend in high school maybe didn't have that. And they've just been mind controlled under this system that's designed to abuse them, that's designed to enslave them for thousands of years. And so 
it doesn't make sense to me that they get sent to some other planet because <laughs> I came here for them. I came here for them. Otherwise, I would not be here. <laughs> and I came here with skills, right? I came here with tools. And so did you. Every single one of you came here with a piece of the puzzle. And I always think of it like the International Space Station. We are one giant mothership. Okay? We're one giant mothership or a system or a network. And we're here to envelop this world in multidimensional, coherent love. We're here to radiate that. And we're here to remember the skills that we had. For example, my 7D aspect is a light field geneticist. I've been studying light field genetics for a really, really long time. That's why I can perceive energy in the way that I am. And so when I got sent to Earth, my mission was to scan everything, scan energy, understand things, multidimensionality, and report on it. That was my mission. I have another 5D aspect of myself that is in the Pleiades, that is an architect slash eco-civilization design. I mean, that's like a, a profession that you can have on some star systems. And so we have built cities. And this is something that, again, we're drawing information and skills from that part of my being that exists in a higher dimensional civilization. I'm saying this as a reflection. You are meant to have that level of awareness of yourself as well. And, you know, as a geneticist, I have been hanging out with you guys upstairs. I support it in the weaving of DNA strands to help you come down here with your cells intact. And so that's why some of you recognize me and you're like, you look really familiar. Like we've been working together. It's because we have probably for thousands of years. <laughs> and we're probably together right now upstairs. If you're getting chills, let me know if you're getting chills when I say that. Okay. It's so another part of me in 12D that's holding, is a knowledge keeper in the Syrian Hall of Knowledge. And so this is the information. When I'm receiving this information, it's not like Jesus is telling it to me. It's like I remember. I can read the textbooks and I'm sharing it with you. And so this is why you can, you know, ask people for their credentials and say, if you want, I mean, once again, this is not about me. This is about you. This is about you receiving the support that you can have, right? This is about you receiving the right support so you can be on your mission, so you can thrive, so you can be empowered. And so that is serious to me. That's why, I mean, when uh, maybe having a Chinese mom really helped because when I was looking for piano teachers when I was young, you know, they only found the best piano teachers because in China, things are very competitive and if my mom wanted me to have a good life, she knew that I needed the right coach and the right teachers to teach me the right things to cultivate my gifts. And so you can be your own parent in that way and make sure because you deserve that. Okay, you deserve that. You deserve to have the best and to be supported for exactly what you need support for. And so these higher dimensional aspects we all have and any spiritual teacher should be able to tell you any person that's saying, I activate star seeds should be able to tell you because if they're an activated star seed themselves, they would be able to tell you where they came from, who they were, what they did, where their information comes from, right? All of this is like, to me, I mean, if I was going to university and my teacher was like, oh, you know, I just woke up one day and decided to be a university teacher. I don't actually know what I'm talking about. I'm going to be like, but, you know, okay. So... Here we go into well-meaning influencers. I have a lot of love for well-meaning influencers, but when I see the damage that they do, um, I have less um, patience for it, right? Because I know it's not their fault, but not doing ego training, not doing your own ego training, not going through sufficient healing and not receiving the green light to influence people, it's mind control. It's not a part I mean, it's part of the false matrix. Like, this is like what salespeople do. This is what um, celebrities do, right? And so when people put themselves out there and, and all of a sudden start playing this role, I mean, I didn't choose this role. I didn't wake up one day and was like, well, I'm going to. I'm going to teach the starseed stuff. I, I'm going to post spiritual videos on the internet. I, I would never have thought about doing that right? 
Because I'm not here doing it for your attention. I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to get like, you know, get attention. I'm not trying to get famous. I, I'm i really just um, doing it because I can do this. I, I can do this, right? I can do this. And again, it's not about me. This is not about me. I hope that, you know, you can give me feedback on this. I'm really not saying, oh, look at me. I'm so great at all. I'm just trying to give you um, kind of a comparison of what original thought and original teachings feel and look like, right? How much of the things that I've said today you feel like are things I read somewhere and are just, oh, you know, all is one. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All is one. You're right. So what? What's the point? <laughs> What's the point you're trying to make? What's the original thought? Where's the creativity, right? And so... I hope that you can feel that this power, this passion. I mean, when I'm coming, to, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not thinking about how can I get more people to like me? <laughs> how can I get more people to think about, you know, how great I am? You know, I'm really thinking about how I can improve myself and be more efficient and do more, be of service and get, get to work. Why do I want to, I, you know, to be honest, I am very motivated to, generate abundance in an aligned way that's why i'm not in this the curriculum of the school is immense people charge thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for this stuff i've heard people charging ten a hundred thousand dollars for programs like these i'm charging 89 dollars, and it's like i want to bring our money together why because i want to organize efforts to save trafficked children and women. I want to create studies for the efficacy of natural healing. I want to do things in real life that bring about healing for this world, things that only we can do, right? Things that only people with our consciousness can do. And so well-meaning influencers is a huge danger because if they have not done the ego training, so this is what I'm talking about is that the subtle energy training is when you meditate and you scan your field and you make sure that you are vibrationally in integrity. And this is why I've reached all the way up to 12D to ensure that I'm in alignment. So I'm not, you know, unconsciously siphoning or sharing distortion, which is if people have not done that and they have a large following, it's almost a hundred percent that they're doing whether they're aware of it or not. And most of the time they're not. But this is another thing. It's like you can ask them, so what kind of practices do you do? And how long have you been doing it? And what is your experience as you do it? It's very simple. You can ask these questions. You don't have to take anything as its face value because we're talking about your soul. We're talking about your energy. These are the most valuable and profound and ex important things that you have. Okay, so it's so important for you to protect that spark. It's important for you to feel safe. It's important for you to feel supported and you to feel that you're actually getting something of true value instead of just circling in BS that's inside of a glass bubble, right? And so you can ask, how much field clearing have you done? Are you aware of what's going on in your multidimensional selves? This is essential essential because the greatest issue that i've ever seen all this week I've, I've been getting messages from you guys i'm not railing on other people the reason why i'm talking about this is because it's devastating okay i get messages from people all the time that are like you know i grew up in a cult and you know I, it, my, my family was broken because of it. And I've always been insecure because I was told that in order to ascend, you know, I needed to follow them and only them. And yet, you know, I always felt like, you know, they would make fun of me or whatever it is, or, you know, even in the less extreme cases, people feel like, you know, they get siphoned from their solar plexus and I can see that chunks of their energy is being siphoned or, you know, in other cases, their consciousness are being plugged into artificial realms. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, but the multidimensionality of the fallen consciousness system, this is a little bit difficult to talk about here on this call. Here, I'm just trying to get the camera to refocus here. Hello. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, there, I think it's a little better. Okay, taking a breather. I'm going to drink some water. Let's take a brief pause here. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alex Nason says, reminds me of the old saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, that is a literal way of saying it, right? And by the way, I just want to thank all the ladies that are in the womb healing container. And I want to let you know that because of you, we were able to make a generous donation of $5,000 to an amazing anti-human trafficking organization. Last night, it just kind of spontaneously came in and we had to do this. Um, I think that we're going to be doing a lot more fundraisers. This guy that started this organization was really inspiring. He went to a Tony Robbins event called Unleash Your Power Within. And he just realized that if he wanted to stop human trafficking, he could just do it. <laughs> he just realized that he could do it. So he just flew to India or one of these. I can't remember exactly. I don't know if he said, but it looked like India. He just moved there into this shitty hotel. And he just literally started tracking them down. He just went undercover and he started looking for human traffickers, you know, as an undercover um, participant or whatever. And he started just tracking these networks of human traffickers. And he ended up just like connecting with law enforcement and taking 100 networks. So that means not just one um, human trafficker, but 100 networks of human traffickers down. And in the process of that, supported the liberation of thousands of people. One, this is what one guy did. This one guy went to this event about unleashing our soul's power, right? And he just was like, I, I'm i going to do it. Who am I waiting for? And so he just goes. And so I was so touched by that story. We had to make a donation to this organization because it seems like they're just doing real beautiful grassroots, um, a grassroots job. And it also inspired me to learn more about that because stuff like that is what I want to be doing in my local community as well and so this is the stuff like if we're just in the la di da land like oh I hope aliens come one day like what are my cards saying it's like i don't need my cards to tell me where i'm going because i know what i'm doing because i'm a sovereign creator being okay and the cards can help us along the way to connect with ourselves. but you know there's a glass ceiling around this new age spiritual community that i'm i'm so happy to be smashing <laughs> excited to be smashing okay so let's talk about the multi-dimensionality of fallen systems for a moment because this is a kind of a hard thing for me to fully talk about here and the reason for that is because you know if i say oh you know there is a technology in 11d consciousness like i, I don't know how many people are going to really understand what i'm talking about and so this is like advanced and further intermediate level curriculum stuff that's going to be in ESA. But for those of you that, you know, are tuned in or you can just feel, just to <laughs> feel through your tuning fork, uh, this information that I'm sharing with you. But basically, up in 11D, there is a um, distortion or a break in the universal architecture. And this break um, was created a really, really long time and it's hard to talk about time multidimensionally, but essentially it has to do with these um, fallen angelic families. Now we've all heard the stories of the fallen angels and Lucifer and all of this stuff. So all of these things are mystical um, <clears throat> perceptions of architecture of the universal consciousness. And so essentially in 11D, there was a break. And this is a very high level of consciousness, obviously. Like when you're an angelic, People think that angels are just like these fluffy beings that don't really have a mind, that just emanate love, like their job is to just like pray over you, right? But actually, angels are just, you know, they're the same as higher dimensional ETs and they're the same as higher dimensional universal consciousness conglomerates or packets. <laughs> and so you have universal knowledge of creation when you're an angel. So really, angels are also scientists in the best way possible, right? In the original context, that scientists are beings that understand reality, understand how the mechanisms of the universe function. So who would understand those things? It would be the angelics because the angelics, many of them are creator beings. And so we co-create with the universe because 
we have devoted our love and devotion to our soul's growth for a very, very, very long time to the point of being given clearance and given trust um, to hold this information, right? So this is another place where we're starting to break down these false images of Jesus and Mary and these, you know, these archangels that in the new age community people like to put images of so much. Like these beings aren't empty headed bubbles of, of nothing. Like they, they have information and knowledge, knowledge inside of their being knowledge of creation, knowledge of how the universe exists, knowledge, knowledge of how form refracts through geometric structures, right? They don't just stand there and tell you that they love you. Even though when you're in their presence, you feel nothing but divine love because that's the fabric of their being. <laughs> but if they have to say, if they have to like act like they're in a state of divine love, then, you know, I don't know. And so... If we understand that the fall actually occurred all the way up in 11D, we can understand then that, because, you know, this is a thing that's confusing. This took a very long time for me to understand because I actually also experienced myself. I had a teacher when I woke up um, onto my shamanic path. I had a teacher who was an ayahuasca, te uh, ayahuasca shaman. And, you know, I just had these amazing dreams. Um, this, <laughs> this experience I had I was down in Costa Rica and I was down there just to volunteer at a yoga center. And one morning I had this dream that this green goddess came to me and she looked at me and she said, you're becoming a shaman. And I woke up from this dream. You know, those moments where you, you have this vivid dream and you're like, <gasps> and so I wake up from this dream and I'm like, what does it mean? Who is this being? And so I go out into the courtyard and everybody's frantic you know they're yelling about stuff and the, the gardener is a magical uh, medicine gardener he was like so yeah i have this ayahuasca tree over here and it's, it's like this tree this giant tree the the vine was growing on and uh he points over and he's yelling he's like oh my god it's gone so i just woke up from this dream right and i'm still kind of you know dazily walking through and everybody's running towards the tree so i go over there and it turns out that the tree had just fallen over as we were sleeping. And so next thing I know, we're just harvesting this, this plant to make sure that we can save it. And it turns out that this gardener had started studied with the Native American medicine people there for decades. And so he took the materials home and he cooked it. And we were sleeping on this bunk and we were just getting cooked by this, this medicine. And so, by the way, the ayahuasca community is another one that is fraught with fraud, okay? Um, and here's a really great example that I came up with recently. It's like saying that you're a shaman and saying that you're a spiritual healer and saying that you're a spiritual teacher without adequate training and without a certificate. And I don't mean from the false matrix. I just mean that's between you and yourself. Right. That's between you and your higher self and God. And that's called integrity. And nobody's going to come and ask you for a piece of paper in the organic reality. But it's a vibration. Right. And so if but if somebody comes over to your house and they're like, I'm an electrician, you know, I can fix your electrical problem. And then they take your money. But then it turns out that they have no idea what they're doing and they just kind of cut a bunch of wires. That's called fraud. Right. <laughs> that's called fraud because. They told you that there's something, but they're actually not educated and not trained to do that thing. Well, it's the same thing. It's just that in the natural healing community, there's not very much um, processes in place. And so then the thing is that if you have not been validated and if it's not your soul's mission or if you don't have the skills. And, and by the way, it's just important to distinguish here that soul skills and soul abilities and human skills and human abilities are not the same thing, right? You might be somebody that have a lot of soul skills and you're meant to be a healer. All that is so beautiful. If you're on the path of being called to become a healer, the world needs you at your best so much. Don't skimp out on the world. The world deserves all of you. The world deserves you in your full capacity, in your highest level of attainment of your skill. Right. 
And so here, if we have people just straight up calling themselves shamans and galactic healers and teachers, but if they actually don't have the right credentials, then they are, what are they called? Frauds, right? We can say what frauds are in any other profession, but it's very hard to, to say because in the new age community, there's not very clear cut guidelines, right? And so anyway, in this situation, <laughs> Um, I'm being cooked by this medicine and I, I end up going into my first ayahuasca ceremony. That was how I ended up at my first ayahuasca ceremony. And I had never looked for ayahuasca. I never really thought, oh, that's cool. I think I want to go do it. I, I've heard of it. But, you know, that whole experience was kind of my first encounter with this medicine. And then after that, I had to go back to Canada. And uh, immediately soon after that, I met this guy who um, was a quote unquote, ayahuasca shaman. Um, let's just say I learned a lot of things sideways and I learned things really fast. And he was definitely my spiritual boot camp because, you know, in a scenario like that, what ayahuasca really does is it opens up your psychic connection to the other realms and the other dimensions. But because that those dimensionalities are heavily infested with entities and beings, especially the ayahuasca is being used, like the, the relationship of the plant between the plant and the shaman is very intimate and is a very beautiful thing. The shaman almost becomes this portal through which she can come through and support. And so whatever distortions that are inside of the quote unquote shaman is just literally being projected into the space, right? And in that space, I literally saw gray aliens coming in fucking with people. I saw time technologies being messed with, like f like people freezing and fast forwarding and him not really knowing anything what he was doing. I've also seen beings literally coming in and siphoning off of people that he allow into the space. Okay. But in the beginning, when I first met this guy, I was enamored by him because he clearly had a lot of power. And by power, I don't even mean this distorted strength power. I mean, he had, without a question, magic. And Shane, can you let Riley in, please? <laughs> She's, my dog is just whining at the door. She wants to come in. There you go. Okay. And so I could tell that he had slight telepathic capabilities. I could tell that he could kind of read people's minds and, and had awareness of energy fields. I could tell that he even could. <laughs> Hi, Riley. <laughs> there was just about something in the way. This is, I think these are song lyrics. Something in the way about he moves or you know, the way that he moved was very enamoring because, you know, I could feel that he was confident and he had connection to something. And in that moment, you know, this is like six years ago. Um, I was just waking up and so I was totally enamored by this guy. I thought that what was coming through him was like source light, right? It was like the spark. And I was like, wow, he's really expressing his spark in a way. And he seems to be helping people. But then in the ceremony, I would notice that he's often very judgmental. He's very mean. He's not very caring towards their children. He's in this paradigm of, you know, pain and suffering. It helps healing, which is a very old paradigm. Uh, med med uh, medicine um, belief system, right? It's like, oh, the, the harder you purge, the more it hurts, you know, the more you're strong or something. It's just an old paradigm, kind of a patriarchal way of doing medicine work. And so the longer that I sat through those experiences, the more I, I started feeling this something not right. But in the beginning of that, you know, he called me up and he was like, oh, I think I'm supposed to be your teacher. I had these visions, you know, I, I sat with ayahuasca on the river by myself and I took you know four doses and you know I saw this magnificent teepee and I saw that I was meant to be a teacher and so he totally just enamored me into uh what did I do give away my power because he saw that I had a lot of power and he saw that I had a lot of magic as a you know new wave starseed and uh, he basically did all of these weird magical, like in ceremony, he tried to make me his wife, right? And this whole experience was extremely important for me to go through to see that somebody that is distorted and somebody that is in it for their personal gain can still have access to power. And this is something that 
blew my mind because you would think, well, if you sit in a room with somebody and they're transmitting and you can feel healing happen, doesn't that mean that, you know, they must be a spiritual person and they must be a master because you're having a visceral experience? You know, how can distorted people have magic powers? Right? Didn't make any sense. And so this goes back down to our multidimensionality. And so if people are tapped in to beyond 3D, but they're tapped into, let's say, their 5D self, but the 5D self is actually working for the night side, or their 5D self is actually, you know, reptilian or under the, and under the control of reptilian, um, then they can be transducing interdimensional energy that makes you feel a certain way and still be working for the dark. And this is a least... I mean, a less common um, thing, but still happens, right? Because most of the time we see well-meaning influencers. We see people that just don't really know what they're doing and are just kind of, you know, riding the waves. And, you know, having a lot of followers does not mean that you know what you're talking about because lots of people have lots of followers. And like John of God had lots of followers. And now we know that he's literally, you know, kind of a super evil guy. And that was another one that, you know, clearly he's somebody that was legitimately manifesting miracles. Otherwise, people would not be following him like that, right? He's legitimately done that. And there's people to this day that say, oh, you know, well, he healed my cancer. So, you know, he must be good. Well, if he's running interdimensional energy, he has the capability to do all those things. It doesn't mean that he's serving the light or serving universal unity. And one of the things, one of the ways that this has happened is through various fallen angelic teachers on this planet that has shared, you know, quasi spiritual teachings that have a resonance. It has to have resonance. It has to have certain truths in it or otherwise people would just not resonate at all and nobody would actually listen to what anything they're saying. And so in order for these things to hook into you, there has to be certain levels of truth in it and this you know the crazy thing is that another reality is that there are ai replicas okay an ai replica is basically you see if anyone says oh you know i'm jesus or i'm mary and they like look like jesus and mary from you know the ancient times and they're saying a bunch of stuff that sounds like what jesus and mary would say And all of their words, you know, sometimes it can even be advanced. Like it could even be to things about multidimensionality and about new earth and all all the words and all the things we'll check out. But they might not feel like safe human beings to be around. They might have tempers. They might have weird personality um, outbursts or, you know, They might have just like a glare in their eye that is like they're not entirely there. They might um, have luxurious spending habits, you know, for themselves. They might, you know, not have a precise plan for their planetary leadership. Right? I'm happy to answer any question anyone has about me, my being, my interdimensionality, my training, my future. These are the things that an embodied starseed and an activated starseed has access to in an within themselves if people cannot share this with you but they say oh you know jesus well like even jesus has multidimensional selves okay (laughs) mary and jesus were keepers of knowledge in the high syrian councils and you know in beyond and they also have other dimensional selves that are not just their personality or whatever you know they have other skills too every single person in this room are an interdimensional being a multi-dimensional being with many facets of your being okay and so this one dimensional image that we see is something that only like ai can only replicate ai can take things that it's seen and replicate it and copy it but if you ask these people to answer a question from original thought They won't be able to because AI cannot create new things and cannot source from infinite creativity. And this is the thing is that when you are actually connected to source consciousness, nothing's actually ever going to come through the same. And that is why if Jesus and Mary were here today, 
they probably wouldn't be saying the same shit they were saying 2,000 years ago because that's not how Source works, right? They are avatars. You are avatars. There's going to be thousands and thousands of avatars on this planet. Avatars are direct sparks of Source that are incarnate, embodied in the physical, direct. And so because Source is creative and infinite, they're not going to all be wearing white garbs with silk. <laughs> right? And so this thing about original thought is very, 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 very important. About creativity is very important. And so here's a, let's just, um, I, I know that it's been two hours now, so we're going to, talk about discernment tips in a second and wrap this wrap this talk up here but let's just recap for a second okay so how to spot new age bs we are spotting secular spirituality okay secular spirituality means it's missing that feeling of profound reverence profound reverence is a sensation it's a frequency you either sense it or you don't it's a, it's, a, it's a feeling of being connected and having respect and having a deep connection and having a deep love for creation itself. This is the carrier wave of all master knowledge, of all temple acts, of all temple teachings. Okay? And this is not something you just pull out of the bag because lots of people can pretend because ceremony these days is very um theatrical and this is what enamored me about my you know ex uh ayahuasca teacher right it's theatrical the altar the headdress the dance you know everything is so woo you know i'm not ah, this is so spiritual the vibration of reverence for life itself should saturate their being that even if we're sitting on the toilet, it doesn't leave you, right? We're driving to work, it's still there. It's not an act, okay? So well-meaning influencers, this ties back into what are you looking for? It's not about them, okay? It's kind of like the cabal. Like if we just stop co-creating, we just stop giving away our power to them, they have to cease to exist. And so... This is not about other people. This is why I'm not here to, to tell you, you know, who's doing what and when. I'm here to just give you what you need to reclaim your energy and to make your own decisions, right? Because how are people serving you? How is the content that you're consuming serving you and bring value to your life and taking you into your potential and taking us as a collective into the creation of the new earth? Right? So well-meaning influencers are, are, you know, junk food for our brain. Oversimplifying memes. Oversimplifying spirituality. This is another new age BS thing. I'm <laughs> just trying to um, un... Uh, just trying to focus my little camera here. Okay. Here we go. So... Oversimplifying spiritual memes, um, they're really annoying. <laughs> so an example of this is there's no such thing as time, okay? I've heard this over and over and over again from like la -di da spiritual people. God bless their soul because they're so well-meaning and they have deep love, you know? It's just that they're not very focused and their human self is a little bit lost at sea. And this is what we're trying to smash is that is that false light new age glass ceiling, right? No such thing as time, okay? So let's break this down. If there's no such thing as time, how is that serving you? How is that belief serving you? Is it just like this mental gymnastics thing that makes it feel good? Like, oh, that sounds really spiritual, okay? For me, I love life. I love this life. One of the biggest thing that um Kara taught me from the nine short days she was here last time was if you love life then don't waste time because time is what life is made of that's a Bruce Lee quote 
But the thing is, it's so, so true. You know, when I saw that, I was like, wow, this serves me. Okay, this adds value to my life. This makes my life better. How? Because it makes me take advantage of my time fully. I have 24 hours in a day. And I'm going to take advantage of every single minute because I love life and I love humans and I love this universe and I'm going to make a difference in a positive way. I'm going to bring beauty and value into this world. How do I do it? Through my energy and my time. So if you look at people that say there's no such a thing as time, you have to look at, you know, okay, well, who are they to say that? What are their credentials? Are they having a good life? Are they doing anything for the world? Are they adding value? Are they serving people? Right? Because if it's just the spiritual concept of time doesn't exist, like what does that even mean? We are sovereign creator beings that our thoughts and our consciousness, they shape our life. That's why we have beliefs. We don't have beliefs just to have beliefs. We don't have concepts just to sound spiritual, right? It's how does it serve you? And so be careful, you know, how these spiritual thoughts, these simplified spiritual memes. Another good one I saw yesterday was this guy who was on TikTok and he was like, so if, you know, the, the matrix is the mother and, you know, a program is the masculine, then all feminine and masculine is part of the, you know, the false light. And I was like, oh my God, my brain hurts. Like this guy clearly has no idea how hieroscamos since his light body works. And he's just like going to become some spiritual guru all of a sudden because he's got followers on TikTok. And now he's discoursing people about the templates of consciousness. And it's so stupid. It's so stupid and harmful. And I just, you know, I pray that everybody is, you know, having their own brain and can make these kinds of sermons. But then I see people sharing it in the spiritual community because it sounds like spiritual garbage. Oversimplifying spiritual concepts is another way that we secularize spirituality. And this is not how we serve ourselves because then we're not evolving. And we're not growing our consciousness. Right. And we're, we're doing, you know, giving ourselves junk food for our brain. So part of the new AGBS is association with the big names. Right. Oh, the Ashtar Command. Who is the Ashtar Command? Okay. I want to know if people say, oh, I'm channeling these beings. Okay. Like who exactly are you channeling? What do they do? Give me organic knowledge that they've offered you. How have you integrated into your life? right? Because the beings that I work with, they don't have big names, but I don't, I don't even know their name most of the time. I know them by their energy signature and they give me legitimate knowledge. They give me information and ancient teachings that apply and serve my life of me becoming a creator being, of me coming into the potential of myself. And so really the only of avatars that I work with are Kara and Babaji. Those are the only two ascended masters that I work with. And they, in the presence of true vibration of Babaji, I just, I mean, it's coming in right now. Like I weep. I come into stillness. I come into reverence for truth and connection. There's a quiet. There's no need to talk. There's no need to say anything or, you know, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just absolute peace and love of the universe and through that is a carrier way for ancient universal knowledge of how that energy literally makes up the architecture of our consciousness and our dna and from that place is an organic transmission of how the architecture of this consciousness functions in you and how you are meant to radiate and become a source of that energy for this world right so I can guarantee you that Jesus and Mary don't need to, you know, open a mystery school through some random people on the internet who say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm starting a mystery school, but there's no curriculum. There's no content. There's one thing that they probably learned from somebody else. Okay. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm really not trying to be mean. It just kind of offends me a little bit. Because everybody wants to, is, 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 is confusing. It's confusing you guys. Like, I just want us to 
do our mission and to succeed. And there's just so many people that are watering things down and making it very confusing. And sometimes Starseeds wake up and for three years are following some random people and not getting anywhere when they could have totally, you know, activated their mission and gone on there with their lives, you know. So let's come into the final section of our talk today, which is discernment tips. Okay, my greatest discernment tip is stay connected to your inner child because my inner child is so sensitive, right? Our inner child always knows. When you were a, when you were a kid, you still perceive and pick up everything energetically, right? And that's why when you're a kid, you probably think about your dog or your kid. If they see someone, you might think, oh, well, that person looks like a nice person. If your dog is running the other way, you probably are like, hmm, they're picking up something that I don't know, right? And especially our children, our children are so sensitive to energy and so were we. And so sometimes I will just put my inner child in the driver's seat and I'll just say, hey, how do how am I feeling in the presence of this person? If it's not absolute joy and safety and love, I, I'm a dip, <laughs> right? And I, this is the greatest um, assert, discernment tip that I have personally used over and over again. And I feel like this part of me has never been wrong. In fact, in the past, you know, this part would run away and I'd be like, what? That person looks fine. You know, I, I don't really understand what the problem is. And then years later, it'll come out that those people are literal frauds. And so somebody says, I'm the divine mother, but your inner child is running as far as they can from this person. Do I need to say more, right? Ego training. Ego training is a thing that all masters do and have done. All of you, I guarantee, have done ego training in the past. All of you that are here to influence society and to be role models, you will have to do ego training because ego training is a downfall of every influencer who has not gone through it and then accidentally got a little bit famous and let it go to their head. We've heard, we've seen this over and over again, right? In our spiritual community where Things start off good. People start off with good intentions and all of a sudden they have fame, they have power, they have money and their ego, their human self was totally unprepared and not trained to hold space for that kind of energy. And that's why they say that power corrupts, right? Power can only corrupt you if you have not done ego training because if your ego was trained and was healed and was anchored in service and the higher virtues of mastery you know that's funny because ever since i was little i knew that i was meant to be um, a transducer of energy i was here to hold a lot i was here to hold a lot and i always knew that nothing could seduce me right because my greatest wealth doesn't come from this world <laughs> my greatest wealth is what i have inside of me is my heart and so there's nothing really in this world that can give me that because I already have that. I already have the greatest thing I could possibly have. I don't need any of this. And I've had nothing, right? I've had nothing and I have had the things. And throughout it all, still the most important thing and my favorite thing is what's inside of my heart. It's God, is divinity, is my connection. And because I already have that, right? What could possibly seduce me? And this is like, ego training that we continually do, right? And so those of you that have a planetary leadership mission and even, you know, other missions as well, ego training is essential. That is why it's a huge component of the Restore Academy. Any mystery school, and I, you know, I'm not even going to say this because uh, <laughs> recently it's just come to my attention that people are starting to imitate my work. Um, it's really funny to me. Um, Personally, just because obviously they can't really, you can't imitate, you know, lifetimes of practice. <laughs> so I'm um, not really concerned about it. But the thing is, you know, just go through your own ego training. Just do your own training and uh, you will have what you think I have, which is just source flowing, right? Organically, which is what we all are. So this is kind of a, tricky tricky dialogue right but 
ego training is important. So if you're trying to discern, you can ask straight up, have you gone through ego training? What does it look like? Sometimes people will give you, you know, if they heard, if they, you know, have heard me say these words, they'll, they'll know what it is, but you know, ask them about specifics. How many years? How long do you practice? What are your practices of ego? What do you think that the ego mastery vibrations are? Quiz them, right? Next one is human logic. This one gets tossed out or out the window way too often because people somehow think that spiritual leaders and spiritual gurus, somehow they get a free pass for not being human. They're like, oh, well, they're supposed to be godly. So, um, you know, if you feel like you are um, reserved or resistant to their energy, like sometimes there's this gaslighting thing happen where people will think, oh, I must feel weird around them because they're so spiritual and I'm just jealous or <laughs> I'm just not advanced enough. And that's why I feel weird. So instead of questioning yourself, go deeper into yourself, right? Use your human logic. If they were really an ascended master, and if they were really a master at all, you would feel nothing but perfect divine love in their presence. At least some part of you would all the time, even if you were uncomfortable, right? Even if things are purging, underneath that would be safety, an ocean of safety, an ocean of divine love. And if that's not there and you're just nervous, I mean, pay attention to that, right? So deconditioning and deprogramming yourself is, is a really important part of discernment. And we talked about that original thought. Just scan through their content, content and see if it's original, like if they came up with it themselves or if it sounds like spiritual jargon that you've seen everywhere just put together, right? Sometimes I go on some of these websites that people have and it literally looks like if AI just scoured the internet for all things spiritual and then pooped out a, a website <laughs> and it looks great on the surface right and it sounds like spiritual but then when you really tune in you're like like some it makes my third eye cross-eyed sometimes i know that's a funny way of saying it okay another one is feeling safe safety i cannot stress enough and not just you know on the surface but your inner children and your emotional body and your human self your tender heart your wounds, right? Your experiences, everything, your insecurities. Do all of those parts feel safe in their presence? Because no master, if you're sincere, I mean, I, I, I guess I can imagine in the past there's been scenarios where people are just super arrogant and the master would just kick them out, right? I mean, like that's like a different thing. But if you're just like a loving and open and sincere person, you should absolutely feel absolutely safe and loved and nurtured and cared for in the presence of a master. Okay, so cultivating self-love, because if you loved yourself that much, you would never let somebody take advantage of you, right? And so this is another part of the ego training, which is the healing component where we're developing a healthy relationship with ourself. And we have such a profound and deep level of self-love that no one could possibly really take advantage of us because we would just feel an insincerity and feel that loving us is not their ultimate motive. And we would only be able to feel that if we had that love for ourselves. And this is another part of that ego is invisible to ego or disintegrated ego is invisible to disintegrated ego. So if your ego is disintegrated, then you're not going to be able to sense the disintegrated ego in somebody else. But if you start to do your ego training, if you start to heal your energy system, if you start to really truly love yourself, it's going to be really easy for you to pick up where these sensations and frequencies are missing. And then the last discernment tip is just straight up ask them for their credentials and soul resume right? Where have you been? What do you do? Who do you know? What's your knowledge? How'd you get it? Uh-huh. And so that concludes our webinar for the day. And it went really long. I kind of knew that it would. Okay. And I hope that that was really helpful. Um, we got 300 and almost 400 people. Actually, we got more than 400 people here now live in the combined 
uh, platforms here. And so I know that this is a very key conversation. I heard you guys through the ethers. I heard that this is what the collective is asking for at this time. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, let's just kind of tune in here and, uh, the school of multidimensional into shame. So he says, I don't know many spiritual teachers with 3d credentials. So you missed this uh, conversation, obviously, because 3d credentials is absolutely not what I'm talking about. Um, and so, <laughs> Uh, the But I do want to say that the 3D credentials that a spiritual teacher would have is their human self, is their human personality. Like, have they healed their own humans? How does how do they feel about themselves? Do they love themselves? Do they role model healthy human behavior? Do they role model human maturity, human emotions, ma emotional maturity, right? Those are the 3D credentials that are just as important as any information they might have because, again, Distortion can occur on a high level and somebody can have super high level information and even channel high level energy. But if their human self, you know, doesn't feel like, like if you can't say fuck around them or, you know, if you feel like, you know, they'll judge you for anything or if they feel like they might condemn you for anything, those kinds of things, right? Okay. Um, so on that note, I'm so happy and excited that you're here. I'm going to keep the space just open for a little while because I kind of need to just settle down <laughs> a little bit. Um, and then uh, there is about, I guess, you know, eight more hours to sign up for the womb healing container. It's going to be really deep. We're going down right into the most essential pain that we might experience. And so if you are on the fence, you got eight more hours to sign up for that because after that, the doors are closing and we are not making any exceptions. Please don't email me <laughs> about that because the answer is going to be no. Okay. Um, and on that note, I'll take a couple. If any of you have pressing questions and I, I will uh love alchemy says the full talk is actually it's gonna be it's usually posted on my youtube channel so i have a huge library of videos like this on my youtube channel you can get the link in my bio or you can search earth star academy um and so you can definitely go there and watch this video i recommend anyone watching it twice and taking lots of notes because sometimes you really have to break things down and it's hard to you know, keep all this information in your head. So I'm scrolling through. Some of the comments here. <sighs> that was a little bit intense. How are you guys feeling? Did you guys get um value out of that talk give me some feedback what do you think um one love infinity says what do you think about gene keys or human design so great question um when i was first waking up human design immensely helped me but what i realized was just that we're such immense multi-dimensional beings that systems can't really contain us they can help certain parts of us and they can help us in certain phases of our life, you know, to give direction and support. Like if you need confirmation about certain things, but as far as, you know, my multidimensional selves and all of the parts of me that are outside of this time space coordinate, gene keys and human design doesn't really apply to those. And so that's why I no longer really work with those. But at a certain moment in my awakening, they were definitely a part of my journey. So, you know, just go with the flow on that and see if it resonates, see how it serves you, right? With anything, if it serves you and if it adds value to your life and supports you in moving towards what you want to create for yourself, then it's good, right? So it might not be for someone else and there's not really a one size fits all in that 
<laughs> Somebody seeing me in a Gandalf robe. <laughs> That's funny. So Anouk says, do you only give trainings or also one-on-one -on -one sessions? So I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, they are extraordinary. And at this point, I will only be offering one-on-one -on -one sessions to the intermediate and advanced students in Earth Star Academy. I have other people that I have trained who will be offering one-on-one -on -one sessions to the beginner um, sessions as well. The reason why I'm choosing to do this is because you know, when you're first starting out, you really don't need a session with me because I'm like kind of um, very precise in my psychic surgery and I'll give you a lot of information. But I, you know, it's really not something that you need right away on your journey. So you want to learn more about your healing inner children and the more base level frequencies of your being and deconditioning and de um, deprogramming and all of these things are way more essential in your journey in the beginning. So if you're in the beginner section of the school, there's healers that are trained that can support you through that process. But really, you don't really even need healers at that point. You just need to focus on getting your energy running. So by the time you get to the intermediate uh, section, um, I will be open for doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. In the coming years, I'm going to be doing lots of um, legal kind of professional case studies, scientific studies on the efficacy of natural healing because I really believe shamanic healing and light and sound-based healing modalities are the future. Um, and, you know, I teach people how to do this because I can basically scan your multidimensional body and see exactly where things are and you know people have had extraordinary experiences through those sessions sentient soul collective says how do we sign up to the school so you can go to www.earthstar.academy we're not open yet um our launch is 2 2 2022 on february 22nd 2022 um we're gonna launch with just most of the beginner section curriculum um, because I just need time to continue to build and record. But, you know, I, I imagine by the time March rolls around, the intermediate classes are going to start to roll up on there as well. Definitely encourage everyone to go through the entire curriculum. You're not going to be able to um, fully understand everything unless you kind of take it. Like, even if you think you know the shock presence already you still probably want to go through my curriculum because the way that I explain things it's just going to be different than anything else that you uh, probably have encountered um, because I go at it from a very full spectrum perspective so even if you think you're beyond beginner you still want to go through it just to make sure you catch all the little things so that supports your strong foundation okay um, and Jen says, do you offer ego training? So absolutely. The school is going to have four main pillars of training. That's sub subtle energy uh, sensory training, which is the, the training of our higher sense perceptions, being able to see and sense into our higher dimensionalities and sense into our wounding, sense into energy and all that things. This, you know, it's something that we can cultivate over time and it's really a pathway into getting to the place where we're telepathic. Again, people think it's just going to happen one day by accident. And I think the universe and the earth and the energetics are really supporting that. But if, you know, we don't work on it ourselves, either we have crazy ascension <laughs> symptoms or we're just too blocked up to actually be able to do any of those things. And so, um, yeah, um, yeah, the next one is ego training, which is everything we talked about today. And then the third one is lucidity training, which is basically sharpening our um, understanding of reality and, and coming into true awakefulness of what's happening on earth and our place in it. So this is a process that we can go through, you know, to train ourselves. If you're somebody that says, well, you know, sometimes I know what I'm doing here. Other times I forget. So this is a place that just needs um, needs lucidity training. And then the next one would be embodiment training, which is applying these things in the physical. So these are all the most relevant aspects of training that we need. And of course, then there's all sorts of stuff. This is information that you can read about on earthstar.academy. Can you talk more about the 40A strand indigo contract? So I'm going to be talking about all of the starseed contract and service contracts in the intermediate section of the Earth Star Academy. The reason why I want to do that and not just say because sometimes people can skip steps and I just don't want to encourage that, right? You know, 
I want to support you guys in getting as much foundational information as possible because we don't want holes. We don't want psychic attacks. We want you to be successful. So skipping steps and only paying attention to things that are interesting or spiritually riveting. It, this is, you know, kind of the way that we um, can lose our way a little bit. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be breaking down the indigo contracts, but I feel like this is reserved for the intermediate and the advanced sections. So I just want to make sure that, you know, because when you hold information, you don't want to just tell everybody about it, right? It's like you're, you have a responsibility. And so my ancestors, they hold the, that these ascended Taoist people that carry the knowledge of ascended creation and the creation mechanics, um, they want to share this knowledge and they want to bring it out into the world. But at the same time, you can't just, you know, share all the stuff out in public because there there is a reason why monasteries exist and there is a reason why mystery schools exist and it's not to hide the information it's not to keep it from people it's not to make it a secret it's just that because the knowledge is revered and it's respected in a certain way there needs to be a process to reaching these higher and more intense teachings not just for your protection but for the protection of the collective and the universe and and whatnot so when you sign up to the school, you all start in the beginner tier. And I mean, if you found this webinar exciting, there's really nothing beginner about the school. The beginner section is all about, you know, the mission, the starseed mission and breaking through the false matrix, the deprogramming. So even if you're an advanced person, going through the beginner section is going to really help you to help others. You're going to have the language and you're going to have the understanding to be able to explain these things to other people, right? And so that's really uh, something that you're going to be getting out of that. And so on that sense, I am so excited to be here with all of you. And I love you so, so, so much. I'm working on some amazing projects. If you're feeling called, please join me for this womb healing container. It's going to be magnificent. Truly. We have gathered, I think, just over 350 incredible women from all over the planet now. And yeah, uh, we're not going to be watering anything down. We're diving right into dismantling an 11D reversal technology right down into healing you know our physical body and its sexuality as well because it's all interconnected and so i am excited um and on that note i love you i love you i love you so much i'm so joyful to be here with all of you i love the earth i love our mission it's just very exciting very exciting and so uh, I will see you guys next week. Um, I think I had an idea for what I was going to share next week, but I don't exactly remember it now, so I'm going to get it back. But anyway, on that note, send me some love. Give me some feedback. Write in the comments below if this webinar was good for you. You probably want to watch it again to take notes and whatnot, but definitely give me feedback on what you have experienced, and I will see you guys on the next episode of Starseed Mission Support. Bye for now.